Hello there, friends. Welcome to BJJ Meditations. This is BJJ Meditations episode number 68, and I'm your host, Joe Hannon, Joe from the jungle in this case. If you're watching this podcast, you'll notice that it's a bit more of a low fidelity affair. It's because I'm on the road. I'm in Central America. You know, technology is amazing. The fact that I'm able to do this from where I am is pretty remarkable. And I kind of like the fact that I'm doing it with this uh, this AKG microphone that I bought when I was like 16 or 17, playing in punk bands in northern New Jersey. Uh, if you could see this microphone, it's pretty battered because it used to get thrown around a lot. Glory days, right? Springsteen aficionados out there. I'm in Central America, as I mentioned, a very remote location, the kind of place where four-wheel drive is not optional. You you need it to get over the jungle roads, especially this time of year when the rain starts and everything starts to get washed out. Uh, There's this expression that, I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a troop of monkeys going crazy right now above me because there's a mango tree and it's got a lot of ripe mangoes on it and, uh, I think they're, it's hard for me to read monkey behavior. I haven't spent a lot of time around them, but I think, I think there's some dispute about who gets the mangoes. Um, but anyway, there's this expression that bad roads welcome good people or something to that effect. And certainly the case here where I am, you know, it would be an understatement to say that I'm enraptured by this place. I feel it every single time I come here. Uh, It just, it gets under your skin. It becomes a part of you, both in the sense that, like, it's so humid right now. You probably can't see this if I hold this up to the camera. But on this Focusrite um, sound interface here, it's it's covered with dew because it's it's so humid. You know, you can shower here, and the second you go outside, uh, you're just sweating. Like, the jungle, the jungle's going to have its way with you no matter what you do. Um, things break here. It doesn't matter what it is. Things that we come to rely on with uh, a certain amount of certainty in the States, you know, they, the jungle just wears away at them. The jungle wears away at your skin. Uh, I was here a couple of years ago, and we were doing a fair bit of surfing, and uh, my chest was just raw. You know, I had, like, open wounds on my skin just from the friction of the board against uh, my chest. Fortunately, I've learned how to avoid that, but what I'm trying to say here is that the jungle gets into you whether you want it to or not. Um, becomes a part of you, and you can either welcome that or try and fight it. And you know, I say the jungle, I'm in like a pretty posh place right now, but at the same time, the jungle wins. <laughs> doesn't matter the monkeys are just going crazy every time I'm here too I feel this like sheer exhaustion at day's end and it's the same thing I feel after I've been on like an all day hunt in the woods Uh, and it's just because there's more life per square inch here I think than anywhere else I've been in the world and you just feel that if you're like attuned to it, you're, you're constantly just absorbing that data and feeling that vibration all day long. And it just wears you out. Um, especially if you're kind of like a a sensitive creature like me, I mean that in the sense that I'm kind of fragile, like I, I, I receive a lot of this stuff and it really just, uh, it exhausts me in a beautiful way. Um, but you know, I'm here, I'm working with Josh and Emily, uh, it's a very productive trip. I got to teach some jujitsu yesterday, which I'll talk a little bit about later in this episode. Um, but, you know, I'm just thinking about so much of the work that we do with clients. It really, it starts at home. It starts like in your own heart and soul. And um, I've really been like taking on a lot of my weaker and darker elements lately and in, in a hopefully a more honest and sincere and open way. And um, I guess I had this illusion of thinking I had made some progress. Uh, And I think I have, but 
you know, I'm not as far along as I thought I was. And I was having this conversation with my wife, Frances, last night. And she she said to me in her clear-eyed, beautiful way, well, does that ever stop? And I've never had any illusion or delusion of it stopping. But I guess I just got so wrapped up in the progress that I forgot that the process continues. And that's kind of what's being revealed to me by my conversations with Josh and Emily, by my time in the jungle, by these monkeys that are warring over the mangoes. And I think there's an important distinction to explore here around the fact that we can get trapped in this idea of self-improvement. I've talked about this on a previous episode. But I think, in truth, it's not a matter of additive self-improvement. It's really a matter of essentialism or subtraction. Because, you know, as Alan Watts would say, you can only, you can only be yourself, right? That's, we only have these experiences to inform our being, and we only have this DNA to inform our operating system. And those two things in combination form something we call a self, which can debate whether that exists or not. That's what we've got. That's what we've got to make sense of this world. And we can only ever be that thing. So in my mind, it's a matter of taking away everything that isn't that thing. Removing everything that isn't you. Uh, and that's sort of the clarity that I'm feeling this morning as I sit down to talk to you all about this. And I think there's an analogy here to jujitsu. Uh, I taught a class yesterday here with... Uh, all beginners, all white belts, a group that Emily works with on a consistent basis, a bunch of beautiful humans. And I was saying to them that I did a lesson on closed guard, and closed guard has this reputation of being like a beginner's guard, right? It's one of the first guards we all learn. And it's a guard I've come back to and embraced for all of its complexity and nuance as a black belt. And I'm enthralled and enraptured with all of its potential and all of its energy in the same way that I'm enthralled and enraptured with the energy of this place. You know, I'm looking to my left right now and there's this gorgeous spider web that's uh, kind of slanting in the morning light. Um, listening to the monkeys, obviously. Listening to all these unfamiliar bird songs. All of that is present too, thematically, in this exploration of clothes guard for me. Uh, but anyway, you know, close guard was one of the first guards that I learned and I came back to it as a black belt. And I think about all the other things that I've learned along the way. My friend Kevin would say that one of the theories of education in general, not just in jujitsu, is that can be thought of as a knowledge banking experience, meaning you're trying to store like a database. You're trying to store as much information as you can, uh, and I, I think there's certainly, especially if you're an instructor, there's certainly some utility to having a little bit of everything in your database. Uh, familiarity and ability to address every guard, every submission, etc. But I relate more to jujitsu as an art. And whatever I do has to be an expression of who I am and what I value. And close guard is that in a big way for me right now. And I was thinking about all the other things that I've jettisoned along the way and how that's analogous to this idea of essentialism, this idea of winnowing away everything that is not you, everything that is not an expression of who you are. So I taught this class, and uh, I ended the class by just thanking everybody for hosting me and welcoming them to Princeton BJJ if they ever find themselves in New Jersey. You know, why anyone would <laughs> ever find themselves in New Jersey is beyond me. I suppose maybe you're transferring in Newark Airport and uh, your flight gets canceled. But for all you Jersey people out there, I'm being facetious. I, I love the Garden State. People just don't understand how beautiful it is. But um, I, I told them about this podcast, too, and I said, hey, if you're so moved, check out the podcast. This is what it's about. And this guy uh, came up to me after class and started talking to me. His name is Andy. Andy, uh, Andy looks like a model. He's um, a couple inches taller than me. He's 
<laughs> he's more muscular than me. Um, and he's a great guy. Uh, and we started talking and he started immediately. I could tell, I saw his eyes light up when he was talking about how one trains at anything is really just how one does everything. He got it immediately. Uh, I believe he's a physical trainer and, and he was saying how what he does is an expression of who he is and what he values. And immediately I felt, um, you know, it's even this morning, it's a hundred percent humidity and close to 80 degrees, 79 degrees right now. Um, it was even hotter and more humid yesterday, if that's possible. Um, and he's telling me this and immediately I got chills. Uh, but my, the hair stood up on my arm and I was like, this, this is a kindred spirit. This is a guy who gets it. And, um, I hope our paths continue to cross, but he was telling me about how he's 35 and, uh, his wife's pregnant. And, um, I realized immediately like this is, he's me two years ago. He's about to have this amazing life altering experience of having a child. Uh, and I was feeling everything he was about to feel. Uh, and I was feeling how open he was to the experience and how, prepared he was to go through this process of essentialism and reorganizing his life around welcoming in uh, a new life into being. Um, and it was just so fucking beautiful. And I realized right then and there that in addition to him being sort of a kindred spirit, that he was about the same process that I'm describing here, that walking the same path that I am. And I kind of describe it as, um, there's a scene, I want to say it's in No Country for Old Men, where Cormac McCarthy, it's at the very end, uh, where one of the main characters is describing a dream he had, and he's he's saying that, you know, he was riding in the night along a mountain pass, and he saw his father coming to him on another horse, and they kind of passed each other and nodded to each other knowingly, and his father was... Um, carrying fire in a small container the way people used to do to start campfires when the, you'd like put some embers burning in a metal container and take them with you. Uh, and his father was carrying the fire and they passed each other and they nodded to each other because they recognized that they were both carriers of the fire. And I recognize this guy, Andy, as a fellow carrier of the fire. Just the same way I recognize all of you listening to this podcast as carriers of the fire I think that's all I have for you I taught Andy some jujitsu I would say I taught the rest of these people some jujitsu but I feel like they all taught me something far more significant uh, thank you very much for listening I hope this podcast this episode sounds and looks okay you know making do with what I have here to record hopefully you know a couple of monkeys popped on camera here behind me we'll see when we start to edit uh as always if you want to support the podcast the best way to do that is to book a coaching session with me i'm just looking for like one or two more steady clients to work with uh it's really all i can handle from a quality standpoint i'm already working with a couple excellent people and uh We've got a beautiful thing going, and I'd, I'd love to find some people who are a good fit for that milieu. Maybe that's you. If it is, I'd encourage you to reach out. Email me at bjjmeditations at gmail.com. Do a free initial consultation and uh, see if you're a good fit. See if I can help you. The last thing I want to do is sell you something you don't need. But thank you very much for listening, folks, and we'll talk next week. <laughs>